Well, great to have you here with us today. Um, as you've mentioned that the China and US relationship is the most consequential bilateral relationship in the world, and we do believe that the stable global trade will benefit all. But in the past period of time, as what you said in this opening ceremony this morning, that the both countries have encountered the tremendous tensions. So in your point of view, what to do to ease the tensions? Well, for, first of all, th there's the U.S.-China relations, I think, are going through a very troubled time. But the best way to relieve the tension or to, to minimize the tension is to show that we can get some things done to build confidence when there's a shared interest. And so I would say an important step uh, would be to, to successfully complete phase one of the trade deal. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always an optimist. So I'm cautiously optimistic that sometime soon that will be completed. And when it is completed, you know, then we'll have, have a big congratulations, you know, to, to Secretary Mnuchin, Ambassador Lighthizer, Vice Premier Leo Ha, uh, because the whole world has been waiting for this, right? And uh, it will be, you know, it's hard won. But it's not the end of the story. As a matter of fact, this is only part of what needs to be accomplished in trade. And I think trade is easier than the technology competition. That's not going to be negotiated. That's going to be contested. And so one of the things I said today when I, when I talked, and it was sort of a gloomy speech in the sense that I said, last year in Singapore, I warned about pressure to decouple in four areas, right? To people in, in terms of goods, that's, that's trade, people, uh, you know, investment and technology, capital and technology. And what, what have we seen? And, and, and that leading to an economic iron curtain. And so over the last year, I've seen the pressure to decouple in all four areas has increased. Okay, and even after we get a trade deal, when we get it, we still have tariffs, you know, so that's, a, that's an impediment to the, to, to the trade in goods. And I am most concerned about the, you know, the pressure to decouple in technology and in financial markets. But right now, there's pressure in the U.S. to decouple. There are ideas that are terrible ideas like delisting Chinese companies on U.S. exchanges. A terrible idea. Uh, uh, forcing China out of the, uh, out of the MSCI exchange. Uh, another terrible idea. Uh, but th this would, it, if it happened, it would be harmful to China, but it would be harmful to the U.S. because the U.S. right now, New York is the financial center of the world. Pretty hard to be the financial center of the world if you decouple with China. So there's, uh, I talked a little bit about the financial crisis. Financial crises are inevitable. You know, in 2008, I can tell you, we came very close to having a global meltdown that could have been as bad or worse than the Great Depression. And one of the reasons we avoided it, we were able to coordinate you know, monetary and fiscal policies with other countries. And China was a very important one of those. And, and, uh, and so the next time a crisis comes, it'll be much harder to do that if we decouple. You know, I, I look at uh, climate change as being perhaps the most certain, you know, formidable economic risk that we're facing on, on Earth, that the whole world is facing. And I think the, the, the one initiative that has the most potential to make a big difference is a carbon market in China. And for that to work, you have to solve all the problems you have to solve with capital markets. You have to have good transparency, good regulation, good efficient markets, governance, and so on. So again, opening up you know, the financial markets in China to competition and, and encouraging that will also help enable carbon markets that'll lead to all kinds of environmental goods and services 
which the United States is, is very strong in that area, very strong in the capital markets area. So those are areas we should be working together on, but yet I'm seeing pressure to decouple. So I'm not optimistic, and I'm, I'm too honest to be optimistic, but I'm, I'm realistic, and I, I do know that we are countries that have got very different political systems, very different ideologies, different values, conflicting security objectives, but we also have some compelling shared interests, right? We need, we need a peaceful world. We need a stable world. We need sustained economic growth in the world. We, we, we want to combat, as I said, climate change, nuclear proliferation. And so if you decouple in the economic area and you see each side as an adversary, it's going to be harder to find common ground where we do those things. So that's my not too brief summary of US-China relations. As you said, the decoupling is the wrong direction. Um, but the, we see that the trade dispute um, start with the US um, tariff hike on Chinese goods. But do you think um, it will be end with the uh, US phasing out? The, you know, I, I don't like tariffs, and I talked about tariffs in my speech. I don't like tariffs. I don't like the tariffs that U.S. put on. I don't like the retaliatory tariffs Chinese put on. You know, tariffs in areas where there shouldn't be tariffs. But I don't think that the, the trade ends. I, I think that the more difficult issues are the technology issues that I talked about. And I think those will be contested. They won't be negotiated. And I talked about we, we, some ideas we needed to to, 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 to to start to deal with this. And, you know, I, I used an expression in the U.S. about, you know, this t technology is such a hot area that we, it's, it's, we call it the third rail. And so I said we need some guardrails. We need to make some progress first before we can, we can, we, we, we can tackle this. But, again... I don't mean to be too pessimistic. That's why I, you know, I keep coming to China because then I'm, 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 you know, basically an optimist. But my speech was entitled "The Delusions of Decoupling," and that doesn't mean to say decoupling is a delusion. It means to to to, to say that if we proceed down this road, it, it's going to lead to an economic iron curtain which is going to hurt both countries and the world. Okay, let's get to the uh, Poisson Prize. Since the year 2013, the Poisson Institute has already worked in part with China to promote the idea of sustainability. Uh, the prize has already been successfully run for six years. So can you see any differences and changes of this year's prize? First of all, the Poisson Prize for Sustainability is intended to recognize projects that are innovative, market-driven, and replicable, where markets and the economy come together. And uh, because I, I think the whole idea is not only once we make the award, that's not the, the end, that's the beginning. Because we're hoping that those projects are examples throughout China and through much of the rest of the world and the developing world. This year, we had 101 entries from 20 different provinces and municipalities. It was hard for our awards committee to make the decision, and we've got a great awards committee chaired by retired Mayor Richard Daly from Chicago. And so there are a number of good, but, but, but the winner, very innovative project in Shenzhen, which is solid waste to energy. It, displaced, it displaces all kinds of dirty coal, it's a really special technology, energy efficient. And that was a hard one because there's another really good project, a lot of good projects, but a, a, you know, a, a close second was a project in, uh, in, in Guangzhou, which is plastic recycling, another really good technology. And another was a circular project in Mongolia, which had to do with uh, preventing desertification. So some really, really good ideas, and it's really encouraging. So when I get too negative talking about U.S.-China relations, then I need some things that provide an uplift. And uh, 
and, and some of those projects give me just that.